Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation. Uh, so as you've seen this morning, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of covered scent uh, cases and, and talks. So my talk is the role of covered scents for atherosclerotic uh, iliac disease. Uh, before I proceed forward, uh, I want to just talk about the TAS2 classification. I think it's uh, important to, uh, to understand this. Uh, this is a uh, transatlantic intersociety consensus that was updated in 2007, and it gives us an idea of uh, what kind of lesions we're looking at and how to deal with them. The TASC A and B lesions are the more straightforward short segment disease uh, that can be treated very well endovascularly. Historically, TASC C and D lesions are the more complex disease, and uh, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of debate whether these should be done open surgical or whether endovascular uh, options are uh, favorable or not. So if you look at a patient like this, I mean, we've seen, a, we've seen a case very similar to this, very heavily calcified disease. You know, what are, the, what are the treatment options? Let's leave surgery aside for now. You know, would anybody do balloon angioplasty? Would you stent? You know, if you do stent, would you use a bare metal stent? Would you use a covered stent? I think these are all uh, issues that we've already discussed uh, this morning. And this was the outcome where we did go ahead and use a covered stent. Uh, one of the challenging, challenges in managing complex aortic disease, and I think this has been mentioned, this is the third talk that we're talking about this consecutively, is calcium. I mean, calcium is your enemy. Even as a surgeon, calcium is your enemy. It's resistant to angioplasty recoil. There's a significant risk of uh, rupture of the artery. And also surgically, it's, it's very difficult to manage. Uh, you can have a clamp injury. You can have a, uh, you can have a perforation. When we, talked about, when we talked about stent grafts, I know there's a mixed audience here. So these are some of the, uh, some of the grafts that are out in the market, just to give you an idea of what they, what they look like. They can be balloon expandable, they can be self-expanding, and each uh, has their own uh, different properties. Uh, looking at a couple of consensus statements, you know, stenting is the primary effective uh, therapy for iliac, iliac artery stenosis and occlusion. And the SVS, in fact, says, you know, possibly even use stent grafts or covered stents for severe calcification because of the risk of uh, uh, vessel rupture. Uh, Dr. Runback did mention the COBEX, uh, the COBEX trial was a multi-center randomized trial to investigate covered stents versus bare metal stents. Um, the short-term results at 18 months showed that bare metal stents and, cover, and uh, covered stents were kind of similar, but the covered stents were a little bit better for the task C and D lesions. And in fact, they went on to publish their five-year result last year, and this was a retrospective review of the data because they weren't really planning to go out five years, but at five years they showed that covered stents did have higher patency persistently for the more complex disease. So this is the TAS C and D lesions based on the diagrams that I showed you uh, earlier. Uh, and looking at the task B uh, on top, there's a pr st probably statistically not too much of a difference. And uh, looking at TAS C and D over here, you can see that uh, 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 there's, a, there's a significant uh, difference between the covered stents and the, and the bare metal stents once you go out uh, five years. But some of the criticism of this trial was, you know, it looked at binary stenosis and not primary patency. It did not really separate out the common iliac artery and the external iliac artery. There was, uh, from what I can understand, fairly a mixture of different stents used. Some of them were bare metal, some of them were covered, so it may have confounded some of the data. Um, and also, when we looked at five years, there was a small number of covered stents. There was about five or six people, so uh, it could have a type 2 error just because it doesn't have that power to give you a conclusive uh, recommendation that you should use uh, covered stents. Uh, this, this was an interesting paper that was uh, published last year uh, from a group in Netherlands, and they looked at uh, stent graft configurations for aortic il iliac disease. So what kind of stent grafts do well? Is there a lot of flow uh, uh, disturbances or not? So these are the three, three models that they set up. The first one is a, uh, is a bare metal uh, kissing stent. Uh, the second one is a covered kissing stents, and the third one is the CRAB that Dr. Runback also just, uh, just talked about. It's a, uh, it's a endovascular reconstruction of the aortic bifurcation with one stent in the, in the aorta and then, and then two covered stents going down towards the uh, iliac arteries. And uh, they did a lot of flow uh, measurements, velocity measurements, um, looking at the different uh, uh, models that they did set up. And the conclusion uh, from their studies was that there's distinct locations where flow disturbances occur, and it's really, it's really related to radial size mis mismatch. And the CRAB uh, configuration is the most unimpaired physiologic reconstruction. So what can we do for this patient? Again, I think Dr. Runback mentioned this. So uh, again, this is uh, off IFU for endologics, but this is the endologics grab that, uh, that Dr. Uh, Runback did talk about. And this really fits that CRAB uh, configuration where you're, you have a total reconstruction of the aortoiliac uh, bifurcation. And looking at a paper from uh, 
Tom Maldonado that was uh, published uh, recently, they looked at 91 patients, they had 67 claudicants and 24 CLI. Uh, they had a fairly low complication rate, it was about 10 to 15 percent, they did have one mortality from thromboembolism, and at all points, uh, primary patency was greater than 90 percent, and assisted priming, primary patency was greater than 98, and secondary patency was greater than 100 uh, percent. So it is a very, it is a good option uh, to treat some of these patients, and if you look at the patients that got these stent crafts implanted, obviously, as I mentioned before, the task A and B lesions are the more straightforward complex. You probably would not use this kind of tech, uh, uh, technology for that. But once you start getting down to the task C and D lesions, where the D is the most complex, uh, you can see that they had 74 patients that had task D lesions uh, that underwent this sort of reconstruction and they did relatively well. Uh, there's a, a Dutch iliac stent trial that's currently going on. And they're actually looking at covered balloon expandable stents versus uncovered balloon expandable stents in the common iliac artery. I think this kind of uh, helps clarify what the COBEST, uh, you know, was trying to tell us. But there was a lot of myths, and uh, there was a lot of myths, uh, there was a lot of confusion about what kind of stent was used in the in the COBEST, and there was a lot of mixing and matching. So I think here we're just looking at, or they are just looking at balloon expandable covered stents only in the common iliac artery, and their inclusion criteria is patients with symptomatic stenosis or occlusion greater than three centimeters of the common iliac artery. They're not looking at external iliac artery stenosis, and I think a lot of those were in the, in the COBEST trial too. Uh, so they're gonna be randomized to covered stent or bare metal stents, and obviously there's gonna be blinding of patients, vascular lab, and clinical uh, uh, investigators. Uh, from last member, I think they're almost halfway through or, or uh, potentially have completed their uh, um, Enrollment, so hopefully, uh, you know, we should have their data soon, or people may already know some of their data. I think that'll kind of help us uh, answer because technology has definitely changed. So, to conclude, I think covered stents are a feasible option for complex iliac lesions with good long term results. I definitely think we need more standardized uh, uh, studies to kind of give us a real recommendation as to uh, should we go this way or should we not, because as we know, that technology is rapidly changing. and. Uh, and we may have to rethink the way we do things. Thank you. Thank you. And uh